Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. In today's video, we're going to be installing the 80 watt UV sterilizer from AquaUV.com here on the 300 gallon reef. Now, if you're new to the channel, it's not just 300 gallons. We do have additional tanks here in the fish room, a 40 gallon shallow reef, a 50 gallon uh, low boy, which I sell core water, and then two additional 50 gallon low boys that I also um, have extra frags and all that kind of stuff in. So all those tanks come together here to a geo sum giving us approximately 500 gallons. So when I refer to a 500 gallon tank later in the video, you guys know what I'm talking about. Now, if you've been here for a while, you know that I've been using the Jabo 55 watt uh, UV sterilizers for the last couple years that the system's been up. And I've had two of them and both of them had the same issues. Now, the first issue that I had with that particular UV sterilizer is that it was starting to leak. Nothing crazy, but the main body had some salt creep indicating that there was some kind of leak. And it was actually in the same area on both UV sterilizers. Now the second issue, which is really kind of where I decided I was going to remove them all together, was because when I was changing the bulb, and you guys saw this in a video, I will try to link that video in the description so you guys can see it for yourself, but the uh, inside of the plastic of the UV sterilizer was starting to break down. It was like a black film all over my hands. Did some research. I'm not the only one having this issue. Now, is it causing any problems with my reef tank? I, I don't know. The... Uh, I do an ICP test every three months, nothing came up on it. I don't see any ill effects from the plastic, but with it breaking down, it just it's just not good quality. I don't wanna deal with that. So the 55 watt UV sterilizer is a budget UV. It does work, it did clarify the water. It, both of those UVs did a great job on the 500 gallons. No complaints on that, but the quality and it breaking down was just not something that I wanted to be part of. So those are gone and now we mo we're moving on to bigger and better things and that brings us to this video sponsor which is from aquauv.com slash store uh, if you guys head over there and use the promo code foh25 at checkout you guys will get 25 percent off of msrp and then if you spend more than 60 dollars you'll also get free shipping so not only you're going to save some money but if you use that promo code uh, you support the channel letting them know that my videos are not useless so <laughs> appreciate that head on over there and use that promo code and you'll, again you'll get 25 percent off msrp and i will put all that information in the description now this uv sterilizer is the 80 watt it's two bulbs 40 watts a piece and um there's a big old monster power supply which kind of caught me off guard but i get the point it has to be big it has to provide the power and it also has to have room to cool itself so um yeah it caught me off guard, but it's pretty, I mean, it's good. I mean, I like it. The whole the whole setup just is solid, uh, very solid construction. I mean, if you pick this thing up compared to the Jabo, I mean, it's just, it's a rock. I mean, even though it's plastic, it feels like a rock. Hope, hope you guys know what I'm talking about. But either way, um, it's great. I have, uh, I've seen a couple videos on YouTube about this UV sterilizer. I've talked to a couple other YouTubers who have them, and the reviews are really good. So, yeah, I mean, that's all I need to give it a shot, right? So... With that said, uh, in this video, we're going to uh, put the bulbs in. We're gonna hang it up, which I've put a temporary brackets here. I do plan on doing something with a 3D printer once I can get a printer available, but it's gonna go there for now. Plumbing wise, I have not decided exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm thinking more of connecting it to the Jabo DCP 18,000, which I have at about 30%, this big guy right here. Um, it's at 30%, so I have plenty of power left. Now, when it comes to flow rate with this, and we'll get into all that and calculating flow rate here in a little bit, but for my water volume, they're recommending three to five times per hour. So we're looking at uh, 1,500 to 2,500 gallons per hour going through this UV, and we'll get again, we'll get into all that detail here in just a second. So I'm thinking that with the extra power left on that um, pump, it should be more than enough if I hard plumb it in with uh, PVC. So that's kind of where I'm leaning, and uh, you guys will kind of see what I'm doing here once I ultimately decide what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do just making a video on the fly right so now with that said let's go ahead and get the bulbs in there get it up on the wall get the power supply attached and let's go ahead and start the plumbing all right so the first thing we want to do is install the bulbs now it's a pretty simple process I am going to show you how to remove the sleeve which needs to be replaced every single year and that's pretty standard pretty much any UV sterilizer now to access the sleeve you're just going to go ahead and unscrew the main chamber here and pull it out as you can see it's basically just a tube I'm trying to get out of there it's just a tube that holds the bulb itself keeps it away from the water so you don't have to worry about it uh, coming in contact and electrocuting yourself now there's a big old o-ring at the bottom make sure that that stays in place when you finally screw it back on and uh, you can access the bulb here on the uh, outside so we're going to do that as well but this sleeve itself again recommended to be changed out every year that way it stays clean and you have good access to the light 
So uh, to install it's pretty simple. There is a little bit of a groove at the bottom of the chamber here, which then it just kind of sits in. So you gotta wiggle it a little bit, find the spot. And there we go, give it a twist. Nothing too crazy, just snug it down. There is, again, a big O-ring there that prevents it from leaking. Now, to install the bulb is pretty simple. We're just gonna take off the glow cap, which is the indication that the light is working because uh, the bulb does come to right here. When it turns on, of course, the cap will glow, letting you know that the bulb does work and it's not blown or anything like that. So usually, or at least on the j -Bow, they had a little of a peep window at the bottom, basically the same thing. So to install the bulbs, make sure you don't touch them. Um, I, had made, I have made that mistake in the past. Did it do anything that I noticed wrong? Did it do anything to bulbs? Not that I, I particularly noticed, but they recommend that you don't touch them. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here. Well, I'm completely off camera. Ooh, this should be interesting. All right, just slide it in. All right. Now I do have to mention this, guys. Don't look at the bulbs. Don't turn it on. Don't look at the bulbs. I'm saying this because somebody's done it, right? Don't directly ever look at the UV light. It's not good for your eyes. It can really mess you up. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put the glow cap back on. Now, again, the bulb will move around in this. The cap is simply to uh, make sure you guys can see that the bulbs are working. So we're going to put that on there. Quick twist. All right, now they do have the um, tape here, and that's where you're going to connect the uh, power supply. So I don't want to do this, here we go. Uh, it is kind of keyed. Uh, basically, it's just wider on one side than the other, so you can only really put it in one side. All right, and that's not it, there we go. All right, make sure that's connected. Good to go. Slide the bulb in there, and then put on the cap for the power supply. And that's it. That's all she wrote. Of course, make sure all this is tightened down. Good to go. And uh, just do the exact same thing on the other side, which we'll uh, do right now. And there we go, it's all set. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and hang it up uh, beside the tank where I have those temporary hooks, and then we're gonna go ahead and start the, uh, the plumbing. Okay, now that we got the UV sterilizer hanging up, let's go ahead and plumb it into the system. Now, uh, I have finally decided on using PVC hardline plumbing. Now, they do provide these two inch unions, which is definitely gonna be beneficial when you need to remove it, take care of the bulbs. As you can see, the wiring is facing behind the reef tank, and that would be a huge pain if I could not remove it. So definitely adding the unions. We'll use a two inch uh, piece of PVC, which will connect that bad boy and then I'm going to dial it down to three quarter inches so it's two inches to one and one half and then one and one half to uh, the uh, three quarter inch now ideally I'd rather stay at an inch if I can but I uh, kind of just going what I currently have now the plumbing on the new system is going to be one inch for this system I do have three quarters so we do have a three quarter inch line going over to the frag tanks off of that JBO DCS 18,000 so my plan is to tap into that and then use a ball valve to control the flow. Now, just in case uh, you guys are not aware of this, every tank inside this fish room has a ball valve on the return line. That allows me to add back pressure to the unit. So what I'm gonna do is just dial those down a little bit more, crank up the pump, and send as much flow as I possibly can, or at least try to get to that uh, 2,000 gallons per hour, uh, which is kind of what I'm striving for. So we're gonna see how it turns out. I'm gonna, I mean, we're gonna, we'll see what happens. If that doesn't work, then I will get a separate pump just for the UV sterilizer, but I'm first going to tap into the three quarter inch line and see how that turns out. So let's go ahead and get started. So I just got done installing the inlet, uh, relatively easy. Again, we do have the ball valve just in case we need to dial it in. Now it is connected to a 5,000 gallon per hour pump. And again, that pump is at like 30 or 40% currently powering all the uh, four tanks or the four frag tanks that it's attached to. So there's plenty of power, but I added the ball valve just in case. And plus it allows me to stay consistent once we dial it in, which you guys will see later in the video. Other than that, it's pretty simple and uh, hopefully it'll work out well. Now we're gonna move over to the drain line. My plan is to come over here a little bit. We're gonna do the same connection up here. Come over with the PVC, come down, come in front of the sump because I don't feel like drilling any more holes. And plus there's a ton of PVC behind 
uh, this setup, which is going to make it very difficult to get in there with more PVC because uh, we got the return lines, plus we got all the plumbing and returns for all the other tanks. So we're going to come down, go in front, right by the sump itself, uh, right there, and then uh, dump it into the skimmer section. So, yeah, let's go and get started. So I just finished the plumbing. It was nothing too difficult. And yeah, it doesn't look horrible, but it's definitely not the best work I've ever done. It is a temporary solution. You guys know that we only have a few months left of this setup till we move on to some bigger and better things. This is, again, just a temporary setup and uh, to serve a purpose. And we'll talk about that purpose a little bit later in the video. Now, uh, only thing left to do is to go ahead and turn the flow on, check for leaks. Once that's done, we will dial in the gallons per hour and then we'll turn on the bulb. So let's go and do that. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if it leaks. Nothing so far. It's filling up, I can hear it. Let's go and see if we got. Well, we do got some flow. I will add a piece of PVC there so it's not obviously making that noise. But uh, yeah, let's just give it a few minutes and uh, see if anything leaks. Hey, welcome back guys. So it's been about an hour. Uh, double checked everything. There's no leaks. Worked out pretty good. And I uh, went ahead and turned on the UV. As you can see, the top bulb's working and the bottom bulb. You can see, see a little bit better behind that PVC. And uh, that's the indicator that it is on and running. And uh, yeah, so I also went ahead and calculated the gallons per hour. Now for me, unfortunately, it came out to about a thousand gallons per hour, a little bit less actually. And uh, yeah, that's not what we were shooting for. We were trying to get to 2000, which could be pretty difficult given the fact that this 5,000 gallon per hour pump is, you know, connected to three quarter inch and it's uh, taking care of four other tanks. So I knew in the back of my mind, I was not even going to get close to 2,000 and uh, yeah, I didn't. So um, in the future, we will be replumbing this on the new system and we'll go to one inch or one and a half inch for returns just to get that additional flow. Again, there's no back, not really much back pressure when you have a bigger uh, PVC pipe to kind of put the water through. So uh, yeah, so we're at about a thousand gallons per hour. If I find any issues with it, which I don't foresee anything, I will uh, then get a separate pump and just directly plumb it and throw it here into the return section. But for now, uh, this will work and the uh, chiller just kicked on because it's hot as crap outside. Now, when it comes to the recommended amount, the, I'll even bring up the chart here for you guys to see. It says for the 80 watt, um, the salt water again is 600 gallons uh, rated. They recommend that you stay between 30,000 and 45,000 columns per hour. And that would I would have to be at a flow rate of 36, uh, 78, or 24, 52. So uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to be between the, the 2,000 and the uh, 2,500. But as you can see, I'm not even close to the, the 1,200, which is 90 uh, columns per hour. So the only downside again to that is that uh, the higher the exposure time, the more it's going to be effective against killing pests and parasites, which I do not use a UV sterilizer for that. Um, they do recommend, again, the 30,000 to 45,000 uh, for a reef tank. The only downside, again, is you're going to be killing off things like beneficial bacteria and phytoplankton. But again, I dose uh, beneficial bacteria two different types every week, and I dose phytoplankton every day, so I'm not too worried. I'll just make sure I turn the UV off during that, which I already do. So. Uh, yeah, I'm not too worried. I mean, the only real thing that I use a UV sterilizer for is to uh, take care of the water column, make sure that it's nice and clear and clean. And you guys really comment on that. So between the filter socks and the UV, uh, it's blue. I mean, and the glass is dirty as usual. <laughs> it, uh, it allows the tank to be nice and clear and clean. And that, and again, that's what I use it for. Now, the second reason that I use a UV is kind of something that I've started to deal with um, now that I'm shipping a ton of coral, and that is dyno. Uh, UV is very effective at taking care of dyno. It destroys the cell, so it can't reproduce. And uh, that's really the only two reasons why I use a UV. Um, ick and parasites, I don't have those because I take care of that during quarantine. But uh, yeah, so we'll see how this turns out. Again, we're at about a thousand, a little bit less gallons per hour. And, um, so we're at about half, but uh, yeah, 
We're just going to give it time. Plan on having an update video within the next couple of weeks. I'll kind of talk about what I've seen, what I've noticed. And uh, if I get dyno, we'll talk about that and how long it lasts. Because usually it's only a few days till I get my nutrients uh, back in check. And just to clarify, dyno comes in for me when I have a lot of coral going out and I have to replace it with uh, freshly mixed salt water, which in turn causes my nutrients to be very low, which then dyno has the ability to sneak its way in. So yeah we'll see if it pops up again we'll see how long it lasts usually again it's only a few days and then it's taken care of that with that said guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions let me know and again i'll give you an update here on this unit within the next couple weeks but uh everything so far is looking pretty good all right peace